Financial accounting, accruals, and deferrals. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, the email and the website, and the book Cost Accounting for Dummies that we teach in a free weekly live chat. This is a chart that I've used for a long time to teach about accruals. And the first thing we need to understand is, is the flow of financial accounting transactions. We start off with a trial balance, which, as the name implies with trial, is our attempt to take a look at our first pass, if you will, at all of our account balance, all of our accounts and their balances. We then post adjustments, which brings us to accruals and deferrals. And once we post those adjustments, we generate an adjusted trial balance, and we use an adjusted trial balance to create our financial statements. So there are four types of adjustments, um, and I th think this is a good way to group them together. One type of adjustment converts an asset to an expense. So for example, you prepay insurance premiums, most of us Probably all of us, in fact, pay premiums in advance to get insurance coverage. That's prepaid insurance as an asset. Then we expense it. It becomes insurance expense. Assets are depreciated. Supplies are used up. Number two type of adjustment, converting a liability into revenue. And this has to do with cash collected in advance. For example, if you sell magazines and somebody sends you one year of subscriptions in advance, when you send one month worth of magazines, you book one month of subscription revenue. Same thing with season tickets for sporting events. Number three is accruing for unpaid expenses, and the best example is payroll. The fact that the payroll period may end on the 5th, but you have to generate financial statements for the 31st, and you won't pay payroll again until the 5th. So you have to accrue unpaid payroll. You also may have unpaid interest expense. You may have unpaid taxes. Those are accruals. Number four is accruing uncollected revenue where you've earned the revenue, the work is completed, but you haven't built a customer yet or the customer hasn't. You haven't, you've completed the product or service, maybe you haven't sent an invoice yet. It depends how you recognize revenue. So these are the four types of adjustments and adjustments are posted so we can have an adjusted trial balance and create financial statements. So what I have up here is I have some common entries. And I say that this is the Levi Jeans Company. It's the September income statement. And I always say that my first thought when I'm making journal entries is, did anything happen to cash? Because it's likely <coughs> that... About 50% of your transactions will involve cash. So, think about that anything happened to cash before you book a journal entry. Now, what's interesting is there's a difference between cash basis and accrual basis. So let's go through these transactions and think about those differences. So if we sell 5,000 pairs of jeans for cash, we get cash in the drawer, so the cash basis says we post the entry because cash basis recognizes revenue and expense based on movements of cash, based on your checkbook, as I put right here. On an accrual basis, we've earned the revenue from selling the pair of jeans, so we also book income. If a client prepays for the jean or order, the cash basis accounting says we post revenue, even though we haven't delivered the product or service yet. On the accrual basis, there is no revenue. Instead, as you see over here, we certainly get cash in the door of $10,000 debit, but we credit an account called unearned revenue, which is a liability account. What if we sell a pair of jeans, deliver a service, our jeans, we deliver a product, I should say, and we bill a client? Cash basis, we don't post any entry because there's no cash received yet. Accrual basis, we do post revenue because we've delivered our product. In that case, on an accrual basis side, we book a debit, a receivable, it's an asset, we're getting paid later, and we post a credit to increase revenue. How about expenses? And again, we've got cash basis here, 
and I'm just going to type it in, and we've got a cruel basis on the other side. Well, if we have prepay, if we prepay insurance, we write a check for paying three months of insurance expense in advance. Since it's cash out the door, the cash basis would book an expense of three thousand dollars. On a cruel basis, there's no expense yet because time hasn't passed to book the insurance expense. So in that instance, we're going to debit an asset account called prepaid insurance, and we're going to certainly credit cash for the credit that we paid out. Prepaid insurance is a credit, is, a, is an asset. Month goes by from September 1st to the 30th, and we recognize one month of expense. On an accrual basis, we have a negative because we recognize one one thousand dollars worth of expense, which is one third of the payment or one month's worth. So on the accrual basis, we're going to debit insurance expense, and we're going to reduce prepaid insurance, the asset account, to recognize one month passing and having one month of expense. This is an expense that occurs with the passage of time, like a loan. You incur interest expense with the patches of time. What if we accrue payroll on September 30th? We owe people payroll as of September 30th, and we're not going to pay it till October 1st. Cash basis says no entry. We haven't written a check yet. Accrual basis says to get that expense matched in the right period, which is September, we have to recognize an expense. And so our journal entry is, debit accrued payroll expense, and credit a liability called accounts payable. Finally, what about interest earned? We know that our bank owes us interest, or maybe we earn interest on an investment and we haven't been paid yet. Cash basis says we don't recognize any expense, we don't recognize revenue, we didn't get paid. Accrual basis says we should recognize revenue, and the way we do it is, we recognize accrued interest and we credit interest revenue. Accrued interest is a receivable account in this case for money that we're owed. Let's jump over and look at some of the T accounts that relate to the entries that we just went through. So what I have here on the right is I have some of the, some entries and on the on the left, excuse me, and on the right I have some and um, some T accounts. So if we have unearned revenue, we're going to credit unearned revenue. There's entry number two to credit unearned revenue. And you can see that in entry 10, we deliver our product or service. So we debit to reduce unearned revenue and we move that amount of money, $10,000, into revenue. So you can see that once we deliver the product or service, the unearned revenue account could zero it out. Same thing with prepaid insurance. When we prepay it here, we debit an asset account called prepaid expense. When we recognize that's entry number four. When we a month goes by and we recognize one month of insurance expense, we debit the expense account and we reduce prepaid insurance. Entry number five reflected in this T account. If that was the end of the period we were creating financials for September 30th, we would have a remaining balance in the asset account of $2,000. The reason this is an asset, prepaid insurance is an asset, is because we don't have to pay cash later on for this expense. So you can sort of think about it as having a coupon. So, food for thought there. So these T accounts, I think, are helpful because it shows you how these accounts, in particular, unearned revenue and prepaid insurance, eventually get zeroed out over time. And one more, you can see that accrued interest receivable gets zeroed out. You post the receivable, and then when you're paid the cash, which is entry number 11, you debit cash and you credit the accrued interest receivable, and it also adjusts to zero. That's as far as we're going to get on accruals and deferrals, at least for right now, two things on the website, stltest.net. The first is that we teach the toughest accounting courses, the topics that I'm asked the most about. 
And you'll see on the side under toughest accounting topics that these are the topics in blue and that the dates are constantly updated. You can sit on a live chat in a small group for these topics. The other thing is, is that, again, the book Cost Accounting for Dummies is something that I teach online. Once a month, once a week, excuse me, I teach a chapter of the book online in a free online chat once a week, and you can email me for that. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.